Hello folks, welcome back. Today is March 9th, 2025. And we got a beautiful day here in Southern Ohio. Uh, mid to upper 50s uh, this afternoon. Uh, right now it's about 12:31 o'clock, so it's in the low 50s right now, but it will peak around 57, 58 later on today. As many of you have probably already heard, the uh, bee industry has been hurt pretty bad. Commercial side, especially the commercial side, which pollinates all the food in the groceries, they're reporting uh, about 1.1, 1.2 million hives dead coming out of winter, and uh, we're looking at about between 60 and 65 percent of the commercial uh, beehives are lost. Um, most of these they will be able to recover with splits. The problem is that a lot of the surviving hives are on the small side. So they're going to have to really scramble to build back this year. So here more locally, here in Ohio, if you remember last year, eastern and southern Ohio especially was in a really bad drought. Some of the, the worst drought that Ohio's ever had. Because of that, going into fall, when the goldenrod and asters bloomed, there wasn't a tremendous amount of pollen coming in. And we really suspect that the quality of the pollen was very, very subpar. So the, the bees did brood up in uh, September, but by October 7th to October 10th, straight across the board, there was no brood in these hives. Done. They had already shut down because there was no pollen coming in. It was insufficient. There was no pollen stores going into winter. I started getting phone calls from other beekeepers saying, hey, what's going on? I'm not seeing any brood in my hives. I wasn't seeing any brood in mine either. Uh, like I said, that's probably a month early. So the bees really, I don't believe, were very healthy going into winter. They weren't what we call fat bees. Uh, they shut down too early, and that created some problems. Although the majority of them went into winter with good winter clusters, they dwindled down pretty bad. Then came January. January was pretty cold for us, unusually cold for us. Uh, I had one morning that was... Uh, I believe it was in the negative 9 or negative 10. We had several mornings below zero. We had days that never got out of the single digits. Uh, breezy, windy at the same time. So it's you figure that wind's you know, beating the side of those boxes, uh, pulling what little heat off of them that there was. A lot of them dwindled down to nothing and died. They ended up freezing. Uh, all the nukes perished. Um, the bigger hives, they took a beating. And so I'm starting uh, the spring, I'm looking at them. I got a lot of dead outs. I started calling my friends, messaging them. And about half of my friends came through winter pretty good. The other half, they lost a lot of, a lot of bees, a lot of hives. So, good example. Uh, some friends over in Pike County went into winter with 16 very robust hives. They've got three left. I've got some more friends over in Scioto County. Went in with 17. They're down to five. Um, I know of one commercial operation that had several out yards. One particular out yard had about 100 hives in it. They've got two pretty healthy hives and a few dinks, but they lost the majority of them. Um, how about castle hives? Brian, you've lost the most of yours. I think you're down, last I heard the other day when we were messaging, you were down to about three hives. So, I've got a row here. It's quiet. It's very quiet. I've never seen a loss like this. So, I've got an entire row. I'm going to put a picture in here showing it of all the dead outs. We will recover. As beekeepers, we're pretty resilient. We don't give up. There are... They're our livestock, but you know, a lot of times we look at them as our babies. So we will bounce back. Uh, I do have uh, a few hives surviving. And uh, the, the weather for March is looking really good for the most part. So we get a, to where they can get that nest turned over. They'll, they'll bounce forward. I'll be able to work with them. I will be able to split them after the honey flow. Uh, for the first time in 9 or 10 years, I actually ordered some bee packages. Um, so I've got a couple packages coming at the end of April, and I've got a nuke a friend's given me uh, later on this year. And I've had some other people reach out once they found out what happened. Um, as a community, 
uh, there's nothing like the bee community. Um, we kind of reach out and we help each other. You know, if there's a problem, you know, usually somebody steps up pretty quick. So uh, I'm looking forward to this year. I was very depressed for a while there, but I'm looking forward to this year. I got a lot of equipment and we're going to fill that equipment up this year. So this year's going to be a little different on the videos. Um, you're going to see how I build them up and how I split them and uh, how we work with them and how we get them ready for next winter. So interesting year coming. I hope everybody enjoys the videos. If you have any questions or suggestions or you want to see something along these lines, go ahead and either shoot me a, um, a message. Um, I'm either on Facebook or drop a message in the videos, you know, comments. Uh, I try to go through all the comments and respond to them. And uh, it's going to be a good year. Onward and upward. Until next time, enjoy your bees. The carniolan that overwintered. And see if we can get down in here. Put a little bit of light syrup on them just to help stimulate them a little bit. Uh, they actually do have brood. And I've seen just a tiny amount of pollen coming in from the uh, cedar trees which they desperately need. Uh, they're covering probably four seams. So th this little survivor would be just fine. And put some food directly on top of them.